probably the worst thing that oh, I've done is stab another bloke. I, I'm not really a I can be violent if I have to. I'm not violent at heart, you know. Um, you know, I'd rather avoid it yeah. if I can. A week later, I um, was on a visit and I'd got a hundred rohypnol on the visit. And I'd taken four on the visit. So I've got this parcel of 96 rowies up my ass. I remember walking into the wing and I laid down on the bed. It was Sunday afternoon, four o'clock. Football was just about to start. And um, I'd nodded off. Next thing, I wake up with a wooden squash bat. I've been smashed straight across the nose. And I remember sitting up and I've opened my eyes and there was like six curries in the cell. One was wailing me with the bat, another one was stabbing me, the other one was punching me, like it was all going on 100 mile an hour. I got stabbed three times, there, 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 in the arm. I was full of rowies and I'd just been smashed in my sleep with a wooden squash bat on the side. Bone in my nose was gone, my nose was hanging off by just the skin here. Well I stood up and I was trying to fucking put my nose back on and uh, I remember going to the door, I looked out and I was obviously very fucking groggy and I was smashed up and my instant thinking was I'm going to get my blade which was under the fridge in the common room where the pool tables and that So you are. had a blade stuff? I had a big, an auto bin, the axle of the auto bin. Yeah, yeah I had oh the wheelie bin type thing? Yeah the axle, yeah. out of the wheel, sharpen that up on one end, bend it on the other, it's a big fucking round blade, you know, like a big okay. spike, you know. So I had one of them stashed under the fridge, so I've gone down there, I waited inside the pool, I could hear them milling round on the stairs, well they've come back up to see what the damage is. Well as the first one's come out of the corner, I've wailed him with the spike, it went through his thigh and out the other side and his leg, I remember his leg just went, <laughs> blew up like three on and he was screaming. I hadn't made a fucking noise, yeah. you know, and um, I couldn't get it out, it was stuck in his leg. So. Then the rest of them have come up, one had a cricket bat, a bloke with a squash bat, well they attacked me again, well that was it, I, I, I was unconscious. What they done was they dragged me by my feet up to the cell, which is about a 20 metre drag on the cement, I had no shirt on because it had been ripped off, so I had all the skin off my back, they just dragged me by my feet along the cement. Yeah. I was bleeding to death, and um, they wrapped me in a blanket and yeah. threw me under the bed, they thought I was dead. No one knew till um, the six o'clock muster. Two hours later, I wasn't on muster, yeah. calling me name. So they go upstairs and, and find blood you. everywhere, all up the hallway and into the cell. And yeah, they found me. Uh, flew me by helicopter to Prince of Wales Hospital, and I woke up there nine days later. Mm. My head was just a fucking bulb, and my hands were all smashed. I had a punctured lung, I had tubes out of me everywhere. I was very lucky to survive. And it was funny though, like I remember my missus saying, I oh, looked down the front of your pants and and this in the first five minutes of waking up, I remember opening my undies and there was all the rowies. Somewhere during the fight the the parcels popped out of my ass <laughs> into my underpants, well she's found it and then changed me into clean stuff and put it back and, in. And I wasn't in too much pain because I was just swallowing handfuls of them every day, you know, while I was in hospital. I may have been instrumental in putting some of them in there. Yeah. But, but they don't look at the, the, the sight of, um, they don't look at the, the poor bastards that are, that are suffering the, the effects of the crimes they've committed, you know. They don't look at the the families are the ones that are victims. Yeah. You've ended, you know, drop the knife, drop the knife a dozen times, keeps coming at you. How can we psychoanalyze that person? We, we've got to, when we first arrest him, because the adrenaline's right up, man, the adrenaline's huge. And we, we kicked the, we kicked, we, we knocked him around a bit. We asked him what's in the bag, like after we'd spoken to him for a while, for interest, about to let him go. And next minute, I thought, what's this bloke up to, you know? And, then, and I thought, ah, something's wrong here, instincts tell you something's wrong. Next minute I see this fucking pistol coming through like this. 
I I got my, I can't remember to this day getting my gun out. I went, boom, boom. And one of them sort of just winged him <laughs> with a bit of a grow. We up the footpath, shook him up a bit, and got some bit of heroin, bit of other drugs and shit. Took him back to Paramount Detectives and said, mate, is that you in the, you know, another 18 armed hold ups he admitted to? Is that you with the shoddy? Yeah, that's, that's me. Is that you with the baseball bat and you with the knife? Bang, video surveillance. And um, he said, yeah, that was me, that was me. He said, he said you fucking you should have taught that senior constable to shoot a bit straighter. He said, I'm going back to jail after this. <laughs> he said,